The Gnome Foundation's war on X-11, of all things, continues unabated with the alpha release of Gnome version 50, the major feature of which is that it, quote, entirely removes X-11, end quote. And what's really bizarre about this particular announcement isn't just that there's a version of Gnome that removes X-11. We've known that was coming for quite some time. What truly struck me as odd is this announcement was made by the same GNOME contributor who just this last year defaced the project pages of an X11 fork known as X Libre, calling those project members Nazis. And this same exact GNOME contributor has gone on multiple rampages on GNOME.org on the official GNOME website saying all manner of just really obscene and horrific things about anyone who would dare to like X11 or X Windows. It's really, really bizarre. I'm going to show some of this to you so you can see it all for yourself because it's just really weird. Um, these are the release notes from GNOME50.alpha, so the alpha testing release. Uh, you can see there that they have some bug fixes and some translation updates, but the major new feature is that it entirely removed X11 support um, and uh, make it so that you have to have, um, uh, we removed the ability to compile without Wayland support. So you have to use Wayland instead of X11. Okay, all right, fine. That, that That's that's A-OK. -okay. We've known that GNOME was going to make this decision and had been working towards it for some time. What's, what feels like a, a statement of a sort is that it was made by, let me bring this up here so you can see it, a gentleman by the name of Jordan Petritus. And Jordan Petritus is a release team member of the uh, of the GNOME project. And he made the official announcement on GNOME.org uh, just, uh, just 20 hours ago. And Jordan Petritus is rather well known among Lunduke Journal viewers for saying some pretty wild and crazy things about other people within the tech industry and specifically about anyone who would not be 100% in lockstep with GNOME's technical direction, um, such as the whole defacing of the Ex Libre project. I want to read this, uh, this to you now from last July because it's really bizarre and there was never Never any statement about this from the GNOME Foundation. Representatives from Canonical, Debian, and GNOME, it's a real thing that happened, have begun defacing an X Libre, the Xorg fork, wiki page, specifically calling X Libre a Nazi project and a Nazi bar. Uh, those who appear to be defacing the page were Jeremy Beecha, a canonical engineer, GNOME Foundation member and contributor, um, and uh, Ubuntu developer, as well as a, a member of the Debian project. Now, it later came out that Jeremy Beecha was also a registered sex offender and a serial child rapist. It's a real thing. Um, once this came to light that um, this gentleman had been working with a lot of people with who had not been warned that they were working with a serial rapist of children, um, Canonical fired Jeremy Beecha. Good on Canonical for doing that. It's a little weird that many people within Canonical knew of his uh, extreme sex offender status um, when he was working there and didn't warn people about it, but at least eventually they did do the right thing there. Um, now, however, neither Gnome nor Debian have to date warned anyone that this sex offender has worked with, including people who were at events with him, events that had children at them, including events that had daycare um, that, that, that he was around. All right, so that's, that's horrific all by itself. Um, another person was Marco Dietri, a Debian developer, and Jordan Petritus, a GNOME developer. Um, now, this this all got posted, you know, was it last uh, last July? The GNOME Foundation never made any statement around it. There was no uh, repercussions for defacing other people's projects, for slander, uh, for the various attacks on people, for the defamation against other projects. Uh, apparently, this particular GNOME contributor was able to do this uh, with well, complete autonomy. 
And that wasn't the first nor the last time that this particular Gnome Gnome developer really went to town on other people. Um, Just a week and a half prior to that, um, the same person in question, Jordan Petritus, posted on Gnome's website a series of blog posts, including one called On X11 and the Fascist Maggots. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, wherein he referred to me specifically um, as an apartheid ethno supremacist baby killer apologist clown, um, and referred to the the main developer, the person who started the Ex Libre project, as an actual Nazi and World War II revisionist transphobe 9/11 truther nut job, and called both of us to be fascist maggots. And did what appeared to be threatened threats, uh, which seemed to be sanctioned from the Gnome Foundation, because as far as I can tell, the Gnome Foundation never objected to any of this, uh, seemed to be threatening, quote, any influencers, content creators, YouTubers, bloggers, and freeloading leeches who harbor either me or the developer of X. X11. Basically, it was an ongoing, just constant uh, attack on anyone who liked X Windows. Really weird thing to attack people around, right? Like it's that's a strange thing to begin calling such such vile names uh, of people because of. Really, really, really horrific. Um, and it it just it just was crazy to me that Gnome with all this baggage around this one guy attacking people in horrible, slanderous, libelous, awful, defamatory ways um, because of X11 chose this guy to announce the version of Gnome that officially kills off X11. Does that feel like a statement to anyone else? Because it feels like a statement to me. Now, the Gnome Foundation. Uh, oh, before I go any further, I want to say thank you. <laughs> I'm supposed to do this. Thank you to all the people who subscribe to the Lunduke Journal. Uh, Lunduke.com. Uh, grab a subscription up there. By the way, it's January, which means that all lifetime subscriptions to the Lunduke Journal are $89. If you go to Lunduke.com and scroll down a little bit, there's a little $89 lifetime subs link there. Click that and it'll take you to a little page that'll tell you exactly how to get an $89 lifetime subscription, which is pretty friggin' sweet. And if you get a lifetime subscription, you can be added to the Lunduke Journal lifetimers wall. This is wall number one. This is the second wall because we filled up the first wall and oh, would you look at that? We filled up the second wall too. Here's wall number three, which as of today is now full. (laughs) We filled up a third wall and you'll notice we had to make the font a lot smaller because people keep coming in. Uh, So thank you to all of the subscribers who've helped make this all possible. We'll be adding wall number four here uh, this next week. So if you want to get on wall number four, you want to be near the top of wall number four, go to uh, lunduke.com, click on the link to grab an $89 lifetime subscription. And then when you get a confirmation email, hit reply to that confirmation email and say, hey, Add me to the friggin' wall of shame, Lunduke, and tell me how you want your name to appear, and I'll put you up there. I only do it by request, right? I don't automatically stick you up there. I'm not going to out you. I'm not going to out you unless you you ask. Um, And also, yearly and monthly subs are 50% off, which is pretty sweet, too. All right. All right. All right. Back Back to the business at hand. So what's even even crazier about this is uh, that the uh, the Jeremy Beecher guy, the the uh, uh, the registered sex offender, <laughs> so can't believe this was a real story. The registered sex offender that worked at Canonical and has been a known contributor. Um, uh, when he got fired from Canonical, Jeremy Petritus hopped online uh, on his Mastodon account. I don't have it pulled up right now, but you can you can do a search for it, um, where uh, he said something along the lines of uh, beeping beep Canonical. And he just was like upset that Canonical would fire Jeremy Petritus or not Jeremy Petritus, but Jeremy Beecha uh, for being a registered sex offender and serial child rapist. Um, that who defaced, who defaced, uh, project pages, calling people Nazis. Like, I mean, this is just the worst of the worst. I mean, it's, it's really bad. And as, as this, all these different stories were unfolding at every step of the way, the Lunduk journal has reached out to the Gnome foundation for comment. Like, all right, look, you have official representatives doing your press releases, writing on your main website, 
uh, making your announcements who are making these sorts of statements, who are, who are calling uh, me a baby killer and a fascist maggot, who are, who are defacing project pages for projects that he doesn't like, and just going on these, these horrible, awful rants. Um, what, what does the Gnome Foundation think about this? Does the Gnome Foundation officially agree that I am a, a baby killer fascist maggot because I'm Jewish? That's that seems to be the reason here. Um, or is it or does does the Gnome Foundation officially agree that the leader of the Ex Libre project is our are, are Nazis? And the the reason for that seems to be that he's conservative. He seems to be a conservative kind of guy. Um, is that the official stance of the Gnome Foundation that conservatives are, in fact, Nazis and that you should deface their project pages and and threaten people who who just talk to them like is that really the stance of the gnome foundation because it's on the gnome.org website never heard back never not once heard back from the gnome foundation on any of this i repeatedly reached out to their executive directors which they have a new one every other thursday because they can't seem to hold on to any executive leadership um <laughs> It's just the truth. It's really weird. I mean, if they, they don't have a, a shaman, then they have a guy who's only in the job for a couple of months and none of them will ever talk to me. Uh, none, none of them will talk to any critical press ever. It's very, very bizarre. And uh, throughout all of this, not only have they not punished or censured or, or, or just made a statement saying, hey, we don't think that that project over there is a bunch of Nazis just because they're using software we don't like, or just because they're maybe a little bit conservative, right? Um, they haven't made any statement whatsoever. And they're using the same people who make those statements to make their announcements, right? They almost seem to be elevating those people and saying, yes, this is who we are. This is how we want to be represented. It is, it is what it is. And I think it's absolutely fascinating that this is this is continuing on. Um, so but Gnome 50 is out there if you want, if you want to grab it. Um, it's an alpha release, right? So it's it's still under testing. But the next version of Gnome, if all goes according to plan, will be based on this version and will remove X11 support entirely. It's absolutely fascinating. What uh, some months back, I did a, a series of polls asking people, you know, what are you using on your computer? Are you using Wayland as a as a server or X11 as a server? And what really amazed me is that it was split pretty evenly. Um, as a general rule of thumb, it was split pretty evenly, and generally, people had a better view of X11, right? Like they liked X11 more, but as a general rule of thumb, they were kind of split on which one they use, which it seems reasonable to me. I mean, both for the most part are going to work for most people from a technical viewpoint. Um, but there's been so much strange attacks on people coming from folks in the Wayland camp where, you know, they call X11 developers Nazis and they they attack anyone who would seem to just like X Windows. It's bizarre that it's kind of left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. So that's not, not terribly surprising. And yet we see projects like GNOME respond to that by seeming to make more negative re reactions, right? They they make more attacks. They they use more vulgarity. They they call people Nazis. They they and then they they double down on that even more by making it mandatory that you have to use one project or another, which usually just makes Linux users cranky. We don't want to be told we have to use one thing or another, right? Options are kind of in our blood. It's kind of how we work. We like the flexibility and the freedom. And so it's 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 interesting to me that this is the route they've gone down. It feels very um, cultish. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of that going on in the tech world lately where it's not just the old techno cults, I almost want to say, like uh, where you feel passionate that one text editor is better than another, like, ooh, Vim versus Emacs or, or, or tabs versus spaces, right? The old the old wars, right? But those old wars, while they could occasionally get heated, were 
were friendly, right? You, you, as a general rule of thumb, didn't in seriousness, right? Maybe as a joke, but you didn't in seriousness say, oh, we'll you use Emacs. Well, you're a literal Nazi, ethno supremacist, baby killer, uh, transphobin, and you need to be hunted down and you need to be, be murdered. Because that's the kind of stuff that's getting said about people who just like X servers. <laughs> <laughs> How bizarre. Uh, it's it's very, very peculiar. And so there's there's so many things happening within within the world of tech and open source in particular, where we just are seeing these cults that seem to form around political ideologies, right? It's always leftist political ideology latches onto a particular piece of technology. And so then if you don't like that piece of technology, or even if you like it but not enough, you get attacked because you're the wrong politics. It's bizarre. And, and this really seems to be more of what's happening here from Gnome. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I mean, my guess is that Gnome will ship the final version of Gnome 50 in the coming months, and uh, it will be free from X11. And we'll see a lot of people go, well, I'll just keep using Gnome, even though it's Wayland, it's not perfect, it's not what I wanted, but I'll use it. And we'll see other people move away from it, make technical decisions. And as those discussions are happening, and as people are talking about what changes they would like to see, or whether they liked it or not, I think we're going to see an increasingly no large number of, of people like the Jordan Petrituses of the world um, going out and lashing out with more attacks like this, more of these vulgar attacks. And I don't expect the Gnome Foundation at any point to come out and distance themselves from calling people fascist maggots and uh, baby killers and ethno supremacists and all sorts of things. It, I, I don't expect that to happen at all. In fact, I, I expect that the Gnome Foundation is going to find some way to further elevate the people who do those sorts of attacks. Um, thank you again to all the Long Duke Journal subscribers. Go go go! grab a, a free subscription wherever you want to grab the, the Long Duke Journal. Oh, and I almost I want to point out that the you can grab mp4 downloads that are drm free of every show that i put out from 2024 2025 and now 2026. in fact i'm working on getting all of the shows from 2023 online as well getting that back catalog up there in case you want to just download it all and stick it on your your server and <laughs> throw it on a thumb drive and whatever, man. Uh, it's all about flexibility and how you watch your shows, about how you get your news and, and where you get it at. That's why we publish. I just smacked my microphone. That's how you pub. That's why we publish just so many different platforms. In fact, you can even get the Lunduk Journal on TikTok right now, which is ridiculous. I know, but shoot, it's up on Facebook and YouTube and Substack and a pod. It's rumble everywhere. It's friggin' everywhere. So wherever you want to get it, no judging, no judging at Well, Maybe a little judging if you grab it on TikTok, <laughs> but other than TikTok, no judging. Uh, and seriously, uh, grab one of those lifetime subscriptions because they're rad. And uh, if you grab it quickly, you'll get in those, those top spots on the wall number four. I'm going to put together a little slightly different design for wall number four. Uh, and uh, boom, you can, if you come in soon, boom, you can get into those top slots, those coveted top slots. It's like on, it's like on MySpace when you're getting the, the top eight spaces. It's like that. <laughs> it's like that or something. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do declare and broadcast.